Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church, and we are um, grateful for this beautiful day. Mona is uh, watching her son be married today, and so we are happy to welcome Jennifer Linville um, with us this morning. For those of you who were here last week, she came to check us out, and, and we must have passed because she came back, and we're really glad that she is here. Her husband and daughter are here as well, and we welcome them and all of you. Uh, if you haven't already, please take the black folder at the end of the pew and sign in. Uh, announcements for this week, there is a session meeting at 6.30 on Wednesday. It will be here at the church and via Zoom, if uh, depending upon your preference. Next Sunday is All Saints Day, and we will be celebrating Holy Communion. Are there any other announcements? Okay. Uh, next Saturday at, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Next Saturday at Cornerstone Center for the Arts, the East Central Indiana Chamber Orchestra is going to be presenting a concert, and it's in, in conjunction in with the uh, Cole Academy of Dancers. So we'll have little kids dancing too. Uh, so it's going to be a, a great performance. We've worked really hard on it. It's free to the public. It'll be at 7 o'clock on Saturday night. Please try to come and attend. We have several people in our congregation that are a part of that. Thank you, Rachel. Any other announcements? Well, then as Mona would say, take a deep breath. Let's quiet our minds and our hearts and prepare for worship. Be with us on this beautiful fall day, O Lord, as we praise you today and always. Amen. Will the choir come? Let's remain standing, and we're singing hymn number 63, The Lord is God. Oh. 
You may be seated. Please listen for our opening prayer. Almighty God, you have gathered us in this place by the power of your steadfast mercy and love. Open our eyes to your presence that surrounds and embraces us. Open our ears to your voice that beckons and leads us. Open our hearts to your wisdom that challenges and teaches us, and give us the courage and strength to walk in your way of love as we worship you and follow your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's remain seated now and join together in singing, O God, You Are My God. We will sing this twice through. confession. Confessing our sin is not simply a recitation of our wrongs, but an opportunity to receive God's mercy and grace. Confident of God's love for us, let us offer the truth of our lives that we might be reconciled and renewed. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. Gracious and merciful God, we open our hearts to you, trusting that your love and goodness is stronger than all of our shortcomings. We have been afraid to trust you and have forgotten the assurance of your upending presence. We have sacrificed our convictions, quieted our voices, given to, to distraction, and looked out for ourselves above all else. We have thought about giving up when the task before us seems too great. Forgive us and help us to be led by your spirit and filled with the one who gives us life. Amen. Hear the good news. Through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have all received grace upon grace to love and serve the Lord. Peace. Peace be with you. 
Let us stand and share our love for God and for one another by safely exchanging signs of peace. Please listen for our prayer of illumination. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The scriptures today both are very, very familiar. And you'll probably want to, in your mind, just kind of go along with it. First one is from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 6. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The second scripture is from 
Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. His name was John. He was a big man who needed help as he collapsed in the parking lot of a local department store as I was putting my groceries away in the back of my car. I hesitated for a moment before involving myself in the situation, then jumped in. With the help of another stranger, he was soon on his feet again with only minor cuts and bruises. In today's passage from Matthew, we see one of the Pharisees asking Jesus what the greatest commandment is. <clears throat> Jesus does not hesitate to reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. He goes on to say the second most important commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Hold on a minute. Aren't these very difficult things to do, you're asking me? Especially the second part? How can I love God with all of my heart, soul, and mind? What if I don't like my neighbor, let alone love him or her? And who is my neighbor anyway? Someone who lives next door or across the street? What's going on here? Let's dig a little deeper into scripture and see what it is, as well as some of the commentators I happen to look at this week have to say about all of this love stuff. The first part of this commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul, goes along with the second part, to love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. <clears throat> These two parts go hand in hand. The first part of this passage refers to loving God with everything that we are. We are to give ourselves completely to God for all of our lives and let him take control of every aspect of it. There are a few areas of our lives where we can show this kind of love. First of all, letting our desires be things that bring honor to God. Second, loving things that God does, not only things that we do. Third, thinking and acting on the truth of God's word and living it every day. Fourth, going after the things God wants for us and not things only we wish to pursue. We need to obtain characteristics in our lives, such as purity, holiness, and godliness. In this way, we fulfill this part of the scripture. This is the promise that Jesus gives to those who will lay down their lives and love him with everything they have. He says it is the only path to true life. If we ignore the call of God to love him with all we are, then all we are doing is trying to find life in the things of this world. And ultimately, these things will never satisfy. They will never give us the real life that we deserve. The things of this world can seem to satisfy for a time, but then will fade and ultimately if these are where our hopes lie, 
then Jesus says we will end up losing our lives. However, if we lay down our lives for him, he, as the source of all life, will give us the real, satisfying, joy-filled life that we crave. It won't be easy along the way, but this is the end of all those who truly trust and follow the Lord, Jesus. Not as just some part-time religion, but as a way of life. Although this might not be an easy thing to do, as the commentator suggests, we can give this over to Jesus to help us make this become a way of life. Jesus is asking us to surrender all of our old ways of thinking and behaving and turn to a new way of doing things. Accepting things that God has for us is better than relying on our own ways. I have found this to be very true in my own life. <clears throat> it has been and still is a struggle to not be in control. But when I yield to his ways, he richly blesses me so much more than I could have ever imagined. Pray if you are struggling with this, and I assure you, the Lord will help. The second part of this passage deals with loving your neighbor as yourself. This is also very difficult for many people for a few reasons. First of all, the word love for us most of the time conjures up images of romantic, mushy, heart-pounding encounters. The type of love used in this sentence is the philia type as opposed to the agape type. Philia is the Greek word dealing with affectionate love, whereas agape is selfless, universal love. Biblical love in this way, then, is neither passive nor emotional. The second reason I believe we do not live out this part of Matthew 22 is because we do not, as part of our humanness, like everyone we meet. Some people just rub us the wrong way. We don't like their personalities or things they do or have done in their lives. How can we love these people if we don't even like them? Loving God's people involves thinking of their needs before your own. It means treating them with respect <clears throat> regardless of if you like them or not. To quote a friend of mine, God says we have to love everyone. He didn't say we have to like them. We love others because God first loved us. Loving God empowers us to love other people. The commandments not to murder and not to steal are not just about refraining from evil. When seen in the light of the fundamental principle of loving others, they imply that we should look for positive ways to enhance the life and prosperity of our neighbors. The focus on love helps us to understand the real thrust of the commandments and so give us concern for actually obeying, actual obeying, not merely listening, writes commentator Voin Poitras. One of the churches my family and I have attended in Westfield, Indiana, is really living out this commandment, and I have had the honor to see and be a part of their operations. <clears throat> they have a slogan entitled, For Our Neighbors, and are involved in such places as sections of Indianapolis, where they give away many items of donated, gently used clothes, shoes, and accessories for free to individuals who cannot afford these things. In their own community of Westfield, they serve their neighbors as well as neighbors from surrounding towns by offering free pet food donated by their amazing congregation to persons who cannot afford these items due to having rent or medications to pay for. Talk about living this part of the scripture out. For Jesus, to love your neighbor as yourself means Leviticus 19, verses 9 to 18. 
<clears throat> when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. <clears throat> Neither shall you glean the gleanings after you harvest, and you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the sojourner. I am the Lord your God, writes Derwin L. Gray. Now, while I am not suggesting that we do something as big as the church mentioned above to fulfill this part of the commandments, there are other things we can do to be in accordance with this. Some of these may seem insignificant, but there are both big and small ways we can do our part. And in God's eyes, they are all wonderful. In this time of things being topsy-turvy, we can reach out to those we know, whether we like them or not, agree with their choices or not, and see how they are faring. We can also, if we are able and feel comfortable doing so, can offer our services like getting items that they might need from the store. I would encourage you strongly to reach out to those people especially who are considered unlovable, mostly as it is easier to reach out to those we like and more difficult to interact with folks different from ourselves as we see that anyone you encounter would be considered a neighbor. The last thing I want to leave you with is if, if you are still having a tough time with these commandments is the story that Jesus told of the Good Samaritan. In his parable, Jesus tells of a man who, on his way to Jericho from Jerusalem, was badly beaten and robbed. Several people, including a priest, happened by the injured man, but did nothing to help even crossing the street to avoid becoming involved in the situation. A third man, a Samaritan, happened along the way as well, but this time stopped to help. This was very unusual because Jews and Samaritans did not like each other for various reasons, including religious beliefs. The Samaritan applied oil and wine to the injured man, bandaged his wounds, then placed him on his donkey and took him to an inn where he could recover from all that had happened to him. He told the innkeeper to look after the hurt man and gave him some money with the promise that if more care was needed, he would repay the innkeeper when he returned again. This is especially important in today's situations where evil and violence are occurring. People are angry with certain situations, but what I think we need to take away from all of this is that God loves everyone, and how we treat one another says a lot about who we are as humans. To quote another friend of mine, when Jesus said, love your neighbor, he knew your neighbor would act, look, believe, and love differently than you. If we are kind to, and loving towards all people, regardless of what color their skin is or how they view life, we will be helping to further peace within our world. Friends, this is how we are to live and how we are to treat fellow neighbors with love and respect. We also need to give complete control of our lives over to God so that we not only fulfill this commandment, but so that we can live more abundant lives and serve him who is the one true God. May God Almighty be with all of you now and always, and may you find peace in serving him alone. Amen. Let's remain seated as we raise our voices in song together, responding to the message that Jennifer shared with us to love the Lord your God with all your heart. Let's sing it twice through and, and notice that the hymn goes from the bottom of the one page to the top of the next. <laughs> love. 
The moment for mission. <laughs> Hi, Al. What's up? You. The mission committee needs your help. Why us? Well, you don't ask turkeys to talk about Thanksgiving Day meals, do you? <laughs> Every year, the Salvation Army provides Thanksgiving Day meals for needy families in the Delaware County community. Did you know that they have served this community since 1889? No, I didn't know that. Wow. So, this congregation of beautiful people has helped provide holiday food baskets for many years. They need to know how to help this year. Well, last year I remember because of the virus, this congregation donated money to the Salvation Army instead of bringing food. Are we doing that again this year? Yes. People may donate by writing a check to Muncie Salvation Army and bringing it November 7th or the 14th, putting it in the pie collection plate. Or people can mail their donation to the church office. The money will be used by the Salvation Army to provide vouchers for grocery items for those families who have applied and are approved for the holiday food basket program. Oh, good. I'm going to soar like an eagle and go home and write my donation today. As we give our tithes and our offerings in the pie plate at the back of the church, let us uh, join together in our prayer of dedication. Gracious, Gracious God, God, may, may this, this offering of our resources, resources and our lives reflect our love for you. Help us to use these gifts to love our neighbors here and abroad as we gladly and humbly serve you in this time and place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
may be seated. It's on. Let us pray. God of all peoples, we thank you for your action of love that brings us together as a church. Be with our students from early childhood through higher education to use love as an action to meet the challenges of learning. For those of us whose formal education days have passed, help us to continue to use love as an action to explore and develop new ideas. Let us use love as an action to understand that diversity of nationality, gender, and race is an asset. Let us use love as an action to view diversity of thought as an attribute that we may all grow together in wisdom and knowledge, as did your son Jesus. Guide our leaders to use love as an action to understand those with different viewpoints and philosophies so that progress can be made in serving our communities and nation. Let us use our special talents and skills each of us has been given as a call to action of love to serve others. In the spirit of love, let us name, either silently or aloud, those who we know have special needs. My friends, Nicholas and Coralyn. Lord, hear our prayers as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand together now and join together with this and singing this joyous gospel hymn, When the Lord Redeems the Very Least. <clears throat> When the Lord redeems the very least, we will rejoice. When the hungry gather for the feast, we will rejoice. We will rejoice with gladness, we will rejoice all our days. Sing to God in praise, we will rejoice. When the Lord restores the sick and weak, we will rejoice. When the earth is given to the meek, we will rejoice. from death, we will rejoice. When the word of God fills every breath, we will rejoice. We will rejoice with gladness, we will rejoice. All our days will sing to God in praise. When the Lord returns in victory, we will rejoice. When we live in glorious liberty, we will rejoice. We will rejoice with gladness, we will rejoice. All our days 
praise, we'll sing to God in praise, we will rejoice. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of his Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Amen.